Hey friends. So a, a very common scenario that many friends and clients ask about and hope to do is sell their home and buy another home. And in most normal real estate markets, this is very common. I'm very grateful uh, to have helped, certainly helped many people uh, in this adventure over the years, buyers and sellers. Uh, but as always the case in the real estate world, markets shift. And it's essential to know how to best navigate through different economic trends, uh, specific local market activity, and really best understand how the process works so you can consider, uh, you know, prepare for what you want to do. First thing I would say, no matter what the current real estate market is doing, is to focus on getting your existing home market ready, um, you know, getting it ready to go. Between me and my team, uh, including my partner, Stager, we'll work together to, to really help you strategize what's best for you, for your budget, for your time, and consider potential improvements that will help you get top dollar and sell quickest, which really both absolutely go hand in hand. We'll consider everything from what furniture goes where, what to keep, what to get rid of potentially or put in storage, what stays in the walls, what's removed, lighting, smells, organization, etc. all those things. The goal would be to get you a strategic and detailed blueprint for getting your home stage slash photo slash ultimately show ready. We want to get you top dollar for your home. Again, last thing a seller wants to do, regardless of any market, is rush to try putting your home on the market prematurely. So really, worst case, it doesn't generate the mass excitement and ideally, best case, quickest competing offers. The worst thing for any seller is having a less than optimal market at home that sits in the market longer. And unfortunately, by doing this, lose esteem and worst case, forcing us to make price adjustments to longer is active and really chase the market down. So there are really five possible scenarios when needing to sell and purchase a home I want to walk you through. Best case, of course, best ultimate optimal case is if you're able to carry two mortgages temporarily and have the funds for your down payment, whether through liquid assets or investment accounts you can access without needing to use the proceeds of your home, your existing home sale, uh, so that you can first buy the home you desire. This way, no pressure or rush in your existing home sale, the timing of that, or how long you can be in your home until needing to be out, such as if you're needing to find your next home in a certain time frame after selling your existing home first. Also, if you're able to make uh, a, you know, you're able to make your offer really more attractive to a seller when non-contingent your home sale, not only greatly increasing your chances of getting the home you want, but also not necessarily needing to absolutely blow the seller away in your terms, uh, more, more needing what to, to make what I refer to as a godfather offer, an offer they can't refuse. So we don't want to be in that situation necessarily for you as the buyer. Um, yes, you have a lot more firepower uh, on both ends and your home to sell is not a contingent factor in the home you're trying to buy. Second scenario is, you know, next base, next best case is sell your existing home first. Be, you know, just be able to sell it first. Not only are you able to, again, maximize your, your efforts on getting top dollar for your home, you also, once again, no, don't need to make your, uh, your home purchase offer contingent your existing home sale. Uh, not quite the need to once again be forced to submit a godfather offer to the sellers. Hope you're tracking well. Uh, third scenario, you know, we're getting in the less appealing and really less desirable uh, seller consideration offers here, and especially in very intensely competitive sellers markets. Uh, less likely and sometimes near impossible to get accepted in this case. This scenario would be, now if this scenario still isn't, you know, again, if it's not, um, it's not necessary. Uh, nearly as unattractive as it could be, but working our way down towards lesser degrees of appealing. Um, this third scenario is making an offer on the home you desire after your existing home is under contract. Uh, now, at least there's already a buyer for your home and the seller has added insurance, you know, assurance really that, that we're uh, more likely to deliver on our home, you know, needed to sell first prior to being able to sell in your home you're purchasing. But still, there, there's, there's always the added contingency that, you know, that added seller risk of potentially, um, you know, hopefully nothing would fall apart in your home sale. You know, God forbid the buyers lost their job at the 11th hour, had some kind of hardship that affected their final approval of financing. Um, you know, Lord forbid that um, that the buyers for your home just didn't get, or maybe just got cold feet and, and trying to breach the contract and walk away from your home sale just before settlement. Not saying these things are likely, 
but they can happen. Uh, you know, just an added element of risk that the sellers are taking on um, when they consider our offer for their home if your home still has to sell. And if the listing agent is smart and does their due diligence, which I've personally, you know, done before and make a concerted effort on the seller side and more balanced markets when entertaining these kinds of offers, talking to the buyer's lender and their listing agent to hopefully get more assurance that they and their buyers are going to deliver. Thus, once again, you needing to make your offer package, especially if competing, as attractive as possible to them. Now, hopefully, if we do go this route and you're under contract, the chances of it being more appealing are greater if we are close to settlement. Hopefully with many or all buyer contingencies, such as potential inspections or appraisal or financing being satisfied. Um, at least if these are done, if we're close to a settlement, this does greatly help lessen the risk and gives us a better chance in this home contingency of your, of your home uh, under contract you know, as we're making the offer. Hope that helps also. Now the fourth uh, category, getting less appealing of course, is making an offer on the home you wanna purchase prior to your home under contract that is still in an active status. This adds an understandable layer of a seller and their agent challenge. How long would it take until your home is under contract? Now, hopefully if it's, if it's in a great seller's market, you know, under contract quickly, uh, but still there's the same uncertainty that a seller and their agent takes on. Who will be the buyer's agent for their home, for their home sale? Who will be the lender? Especially if they can't talk to them prior. Will they deliver? Uh, they take on a huge, uh, again, amount of, tr they, they take on a huge amount of trust in us and me and my team uh, and your home going under contract. Now, of course, I'll do it all in my power. I love doing this. All my power to negotiate part of the negotiations to try convincing them, uh, this listing agent we're making an offer on, how and why we will sell your home. Probably showing them comps, pictures, how it was staged, et cetera. They may even want to come see your home in person. Again, I've, I've done this before myself, doing due diligence. Uh, to best be able to advise those sellers on the marketability, the condition of your home. Uh, but especially if we're by chance in a buyer's market when homes stay active longer before contract, this becomes an added layer of uncertainty to a, uh, uncertainty to a seller. Um, once again, a need for us to make them a godfather offer that hopefully they can't refuse. Um, another thing to, to note with this scenario, and, and really whenever your home is not under contract actually, is that we must include a kickout clause, a kickout clause in the offer contingency. This means that as long as your home is, um, you know, is in an active status, is, if it's not in a contract status, the sellers of the home you're trying to buy can still allow showings. Uh, it shows in the MLS as active and at, under contract MLS status and accept a, a backup offer to yours. What's most common if they get a backup offer, is that they would first come to us since we have the right of first refusal uh, and inform of this backup offer and in a standard kickout time frame, give us three days to either remove your home to sell contingency and move forward with them or the kick out quote of your existing offer and go with the potential backup offer. Obviously, we don't want this to happen. Um, and finally, the least appealing scenario and thus the most difficult scenario for any buyers, especially in a robust seller's market, is to make an offer on a home uh, you want to purchase and, a ho and hope and pray <laughs> that they accept it. Not only because you need to get your home to sell and not only go under contract, but also still need to go active. No doubt this can be a daunting ask of a seller and virtually impossible to have entertained in a seller's market. So many layers of understandable uh, uncertainty with all these things. In this case, you know, if an offer is entertained and, and probably only when the seller's home has been sitting on the market for a long time, the listing agent would all the more likely want to visit your home and see how marketable it is and study the comps and so that it can best advise our sellers on your marketability and help them understand the risk if entertaining our offer. Uh, and needless to say, once again, we would do all we can, all we need to do, of course, to, to blow them away with a true godfather offer, one they can't refuse. And to, to open your track with me here, I know there's a lot of details, it's, it's important, um, but to elaborate more on this scenario, it's also by default, this is important, by default in the standard kickout clause language of your home to buy contract, that when a home still needs to go on the market, it must be on and active within three days of that ratification of the home we're trying to buy. Thus, the need for the sprint to be ready, to sprint to get on the market. And again, the last thing I want to do that me and my team want to do for you is to be forced to jump prematurely on getting your home active unless we are completely stage 
slash photo slash show ready for your home. I'll say that in some buyer's market scenarios, uh, when my clients have tried to purchase homes, uh, they've been sitting for a while with no offers. I have been fortunate uh, to negotiate more than three days uh, until active at times, even as up to, up to two weeks, you know, the max time I can remember doing one of those. But again, trust you see how increasingly challenging and less likely appealing for a seller this kind of offer would be. Uh, again, many layers. Again, in any robust seller's market, I trust what I've communicated uh, helps you understand that really is nearly impossible. I'm not saying it's, nothing's impossible, but I hope you understand that it is nearly impossible for any competing offer to be entertained when that offer is also contingent on a home sale. My ultimate goal for you, of course, is to get top dollar and best terms in your home sale, and of course, also get the best deal in terms possible in the home you're trying to purchase. To further help you understand uh, some important elements of these options, such as rent back and home of choice options, please see my other videos on these. I'll get to those here shortly. Hope this has helped you, and perhaps someone else uh, maybe you have talked to as well. Always grateful to serve you and yours however I can. Thanks again.